to the Who That Nation. Welcome to the Dome Patrol Podcast, your podcast for D New Orleans Saints here on the KB Radio Network. And mercifully, mercifully, the season is over. Thank you, Jesus. It's over, man. This season, it was the, oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. Look, let's let's we're gonna go over go over this game where the Saints lost. <laughs> the Saints lose today to the Carolina Panthers by the score of ten to seven. We're gonna go over this game, but I need everybody to sit back and and really evaluate the whole season. This game is a microcosm of the entire twenty twenty two twenty twenty three. NFL season for the New Orleans Saints. This New Orleans Saints football team this season was the worst coach I've ever seen, ever. And this is a team who has had Mike Dicker as a coach, Jim Hazlitt, (laughs) you know, Jim Mora, Bum Phillips, all these other coaches. It, it, It just, there's no excuse here. There's no excuse. What what excuse can you give to a team or to a coach who has a team that is as talented as it is, has so many weapons on both sides of the ball, but can't produce any type of fire, especially on all defense, defense in this game, defense did their job. They did their job, but offense? Nothing, nothing. Don't get me wrong. Carolina Panthers has a very solid defense, but let's not let's not let's not fool ourselves here, people. That defense was not that. It's not a shutdown defense like that. No, no, not to where as you can't do anything. They couldn't do anything. Saints came out <clears throat> the opening drive, which were scripted, and I'm gonna come back to that later. Scripted plays, perfect. They marched right down the field. Touchdown. Beautifully, beautifully called opening drive. At that moment, nobody, nobody thought that would be the first and last time the Saints would put points on the board. Nobody thought. And the Saints never touched the end zone. They didn't even get a field goal. Missed two of them today. But that's not the reason we lost. I know a lot of people going to harp on Will Lutz, which he should have at least made one of them. But that's not why we lost the game, people. Leave Will Lutz alone. It never should have came down to field goal. It it never should have came down to field goal attempts. I mean, you had multiple opportunities. You had three and a half quarters to orchestrate a drive, and you didn't. Pete Carmichael, he can script an opening drive. He does that. He does that well. He did it last week. He can script an opening drive. After that, when you have to call plays on the fly, not his strong suit. He he showed that throughout the year. He can't make adjustments. This team struggled to get first downs, and I'm talking third and one, third and inches, you know, just should be no-brainer, no-brainer calls, and they, they couldn't do it. It was one play. It was a third and four on, I think, in the third quarter, I believe, and they call a quick stream. Rob receiver screen to uh, Taysom Hill. Everybody knows that on short yardage plays, especially on third down, the ball is going to Taysom Hill. I knew it, and obviously Carolina Panthers defense knew it as well. Everybody bit on (laughs) that play. Everybody knew to go to Taysom Hill, and that's what they did and stopped it. If you're going to run a play like that, run it on the other side where nobody else is looking because everybody's looking to Taysom Hill because you always go to Taysom Hill on third down. 
you know that they have that on a they had that on the the uh, uh, Megatron or the, <laughs> or the Teletron or whatever it's called in the Superdome. Displayed it. Yeah, we're about to give the ball to Taysom. Everybody know that's what you're about to do. Andy Dalton. I'm glad that uh, we all get to see that this dude is trash. If you didn't see or you didn't know that, you've seen it today. The boy is trash. I'm sorry. He, he, he is not a good quarterback. Andy Dalton is a backup at best. He's a backup because he is not the type of quarterback when he touches the field. I know. Okay, he's about to go down the field and score. You remember how it used to be with Drew Brees, and I hate going back and comparing because he's not Drew Brees. Nobody is. Drew Brees is one of a kind, but not so much one of a kind. If Tom Brady, and he's shown that in the past, he's shown that recently, in fact, when he needs that one drive at the end of the game and he gets on the field, if you give him another opportunity, you, you – you clinching your behind because you know that he's going to go down there and get it. You know, there's quarterbacks like that. Peyton, um, um, Peyton Manning used to be that way. Patrick Mahomes is that way. Josh Allen is is to that level. You know, there are quarterbacks who can do that. Andy Dalton ain't it. Andy Dalton is not that dude. You know who was that dude today? Sam Donald. And it's funny because he only made one throw that really mattered throughout the whole game. And I'm going to get to the stats. Once I read off the stats of this game, it's going to blow your mind. How did the Saints lose this game? It, it is amazing. <laughs> it's when you look at those numbers and, like, this is impossible. It is clearly impossible that the Saints lost this game, but they found a way. And throughout this whole season, the New Orleans Saints have found ways to lose 10 times. Every time was different. All 10. <laughs> no loss was created equal this season. Saints found a way all year to lose. I, I can't get, I can't, I can't make this stuff up. Off the top of my head, I can think of four times Saints had leads in the fourth quarter and lost. Four. So you just take those four games that I'm thinking about, and I, I'm talking about this one. Uh, the first time we played Carolina, the two times we played Tampa. Uh, the, the game against Minnesota that we had a lead in late in the game. Uh, the game against, uh, oh, my God, why is it slipping my mind? Um, um, the Cincinnati Bengals. We had control of that game, lost, found a way to lose that game. And if I sit down and do what, which I plan to do for next week's season finale of the Dawn Patrol podcast, we're going to break down every single game, God help me. And we're going to go over what took place, how we lost all these doggone games. But let's just start with this one. As I said, the Saints lose at home to the Carolina Panthers by the score of 10 to 7, which is the reverse of our season ending record, 7 and 10. We end the season 7 and 10. We were four and five at home. <laughs> we had a losing record at home. Carolina came into this uh, on the road. They were one and six. They only won one game on the road until they played the Saints. And they won their second road game today. Um, The stats, the box score. Let's go over the numbers in this game. Um. And I won't forget to do the grades today. I, I forgot to do the grades last week, Gabe. Uh, whatever. It doesn't matter at this point, but I, <laughs> trust me, I won't forget today. Uh, the box score. Let's start with our leading passers today for the New Orleans Saints. Of course, it was Andy Dalton. Andy Dalton was 15 of 25, 171 yards, and a touchdown. Over on Carolina side of the ball. I need you to listen clearly. I'm going to talk slowly so you can soak this in. Sam Donald today completed five passes out of 15. He was five for 15 for 43 
yards in two interceptions. I'm willing to bet. I don't have the rankings in front of me or the numbers in front of me to see what the passer rating is. But I'm pretty sure it's close to zero. <laughs> if not zero. This dude was 5 for 15, 43 yards, no touchdowns and two intercepts, and he won the game. What? <laughs> make that make sense. Uh, you might say, well, they must have ran the ball down the Saints' throat. Not necessarily. I mean, they did run the ball pretty decently. Uh, for Carolina, you have Hubbard. He carried the ball 21 times for 69 yards. Um, Foreman, who was ejected from the game early on, him and uh, Marcus Davenport, who that was probably his final play as a New Orleans Saints, at least I hope it is, he carried the ball 12 times for 68 yards, which lets me know that he probably was about to eat the New Orleans Saints alive because <laughs> he was up to that point. He was he was running the ball pretty decently. Sam Donald ran the ball six times for 32 yards. Um, for the Saints, Alvin Kamara had a real good game. Alvin Kamara looked real good today. He ran the ball 23 times for 107 yards. Uh, Taysom Hill ran the ball five times for 24 yards. Uh, Rashid Shahid, he carried the ball once for seven yards. Eco Eno Benjamin carried the ball twice for three yards. And Andy Dalton carried the ball once for two yards. Leading receiver for the New Orleans Saints today was Chris Olave. Five catches for 60 yards and a touchdown. Shahid had three catches for 32 yards. Um, Derek Johnson had two catches for 28 yards. Jawan Johnson, one catch for 21 yards. Adam, Adam Troutman, one catch for 18 yards. Traquan Smith, one catch for six yards. Alvin Kamara, one catch for three yards. And Taysom Hill, one catch for one yard. Leading receiver for the Carolina Panthers, uh, Marshall, two catches for 20. 23 yards. DJ Moore, one catch for 10 yards. Chenault, one catch for eight yards. And Trimble, one catch for two yards. Um, going over the team stats, starting off with first downs, uh, Saints had 16 first downs, seven by passing, seven by rushing, and two by penalty. Um, Carolina had 14 first downs, four by passing, 10 by rushing, and none by penalty. Uh, third down efficiency. This is where the Saints lost the game. Well, one of the reasons Saints lost the game. They were four for 13. Four for 13. Uh, whereas the Carolina Panthers were eight for 14. On fourth down, Saints were 0 for 1. Uh, Carolina never went for it on fourth. Total plays, it was dead even. Both teams ran... 58 plays. Saints outgained them in yardage. Uh, Saints had 304 total yards to Carolina's 203. Total drives. Saints had 10 drives. Carolina had 11. They had one more drive more, and that was all. That's all they needed. Just one more drive, and they got it. Uh, yards per play. Saints were 5.2 yards per play which was great. You that's what you want. Um Carolina was 3 for 5 uh 3.5 yards per play. Uh passing yardage as I said before Saints were 161 passing yardage and Carolina only had 32 <laughs> yards of passing. Uh yards per pass Carolina was uh 1.9 yards per pass to the Saints 6.2 interceptions thrown Carolina threw two intercepts today Saints threw none um sacks uh Sam Donald was sacked twice today and Andy Dalton was sacked once rushing totals uh Carolina had 171 total rushing yards to the Saints 143 um red zone efficiency Carolina was one of one in the red zone. Saints never got in the red zone, <laughs> believe it or not. 
they were never in the red zone today. Penalties, Carolina had two penalties for 20 yards. Saints had two penalties for 15 yards. Turnovers, as I stated before, uh, Carolina turned it over twice. Saints turned it over once uh, with the Chris Olave fumble at the end of the half. And time of possession, there was a 10-second difference. Uh, Carolina had the ball for 30 minutes and 55 seconds to the Saints, 29 minutes and five seconds. Yep, Saints lose. <laughs> Saints lose. This this is uh, I don't okay. How can I word this? How can I word this? The bottom line. Well, I'll I'll just I'll wrap it up with this. I'll put it all in one little thing, in one little statement, all that I won't really want to say. Fire Dennis Allen. It's got to, it's got to, this got to go. This, this is not working. It never was going to work. Uh, Dennis Allen is not the answer. He proved it today. Everything, I, I really enjoyed this game. And, it may come off as I'm mad today. I'm not mad. Actually, this is more or less an awakening. This is more or less you seeing without a doubt that this team would be better under somebody else's leadership. I'm going to use this example. Uh, the Jacksonville Jaguars. Jacksonville last season were three and 14 or was it three and 15 yeah three and 15 no three and 14 i don't know how many games we play <laughs> no three and 14 and they, they were the worst team they were the worst team in the league or one of the worst teams in the league they clinched the playoff spot not only clinched the playoff spot they won their division this season what a difference coaching makes then uh Doug Peterson went started there this year, first year head coach over there, and turned that program around. They're in the playoffs. They are division winners. What's even salt in the wound there is the fact that we brought in Doug Peterson to interview for the head coaching job here. We showed him the door. And I don't want to hear the, the, the reason I bring that up. It's, I don't want to hear excuses for Dennis Allen because Dennis Allen has zero excuses in my book. There's no reason why this team should be 7-10. and 10. I wasn't expecting the Saints to go to the Super Bowl this year and win. I, I really wasn't. But I was expecting them to at least be a playoff team. There was no reason for them not to be. They were almost a playoff team last year with not even half the talent that they have now. But they had some decent talent last year that almost got them into a playoff berth. This season, you have you added more pieces to the puzzle. And for the, for better or worse, the pieces you added did their jobs for the most part. You drafted a Chris Olave who went over a thousand yards receiving this year. You you added a uh uh um a honey badger who throughout the year he it was hit and miss with the with the cat but he does lead the team in interceptions so I, you know I can't poo poo on him too much there um <laughs> you know you did you did do some things differently um you didn't solidify your quarterback position which was the probably the nail in the coffin there you didn't sure up that offensive line um you didn't really sure up that defensive line it, there's a lot of things that you didn't do as an organization and you should have instead of being conservative and playing it safe now these are all things i want to say in the wrap-up but I'm, I'm compelled to talk about them right now because it's fresh and we <laughs> really need to look at this through black and gold goggles or take off the black and gold goggles and look at it for what it is. Dennis Allen needs to go. He he really does. I know Pete Carmichael probably gone. Somebody's gone. Um, 
but it, it really needs to be a whole collective of people <laughs> that should be leaving off the sidelines. It, 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 it's just bad, man. It just pains me that the Saints played it safe all year. And safe got you 7-10. and 10. You played it safe from the moment Sean Payton quit as the Saints head coach. Um, you played it safe. You went with the safe bet and hired Dennis Allen. Even though you brought in, I think, more qualified candidates, but you played it safe. You played it safe when you brought back Pete Carmichael after he said he was done. He he He's retiring. You begged him to come back. You played it safe because you wanted to keep that Sean Payton culture, even though Sean Payton is not here. And never really sat back and thought that Sean Payton's culture wasn't winning you Super Bowls. The last Super Bowl we won was in 09. <laughs> so it's not like we were constantly in the Super Bowl under the Sean Payton regime. Yeah, we were winning. We were in the playoffs. But it wasn't a championship winning coach. But I digress on that. We'll talk more on that another day. You played it safe with the C.J. Garner Johnson debacle. And I say you played it safe because you didn't want to ruffle feathers i guess i guess it got too heated of a negotiation to whereas you just shipped the man out out the door for nothing <laughs> played it safe the uh quarterback debacle you went with Jameis winston now you went hard in the paint for deshaun watson I, I, i'm with you there but then you went conservative after you couldn't get watson you brought back Winston. You didn't give the man a chance. Instantly yanked him and put in Andy Dalton, who couldn't stay on nobody's team. He couldn't stay in Cincinnati. He couldn't make it in Chicago. He couldn't make it in Dallas. But for some strange reason, you felt he was going to make it here. He did nothing. And that argument of, oh, the office looks better on the Andy Dalton. You're 7 and 10. <laughs> you seven and ten. Look at today. That offense looked better. Did that offense look great today? No. No. Were they turning the ball over? Did they turn the ball over a ton under Andy Dalton? No, they did. They didn't turn it over a lot. They did turn it over, but they didn't turn it over a ton, which is what the fear was under Jameis Winston. You know the old 30 for 30 that we love to bring up about Jameis Winston. You played this safe. You figured, oh, Andy Dalton, he's not going to go out there and cause no waves. He's not going to go out there and lose us a game. And for the most part, he didn't. Andy Dalton didn't lose us any game. Well, uh, the Arizona Cardinals game, he lost. But other than that, Andy Dalton didn't go out there and lose you a game. But the problem is Andy Dalton didn't go out there and win you one either. And so th there you have it. And this is where we're at. And it's very upsetting uh, that your season, you wasted a season. here. You, you really wasted a year when you had a talented roster. You had a weak division. You had, uh, for the most part, you can say a wide open NFC. And you squandered it. Congratulations, New Orleans Saints organization. <laughs> you didn't put yourself behind the eight ball further behind the eight ball and because we have a lot of questions that need to be answered but we'll go over that another day let me give my grades and we're going to head up out of here uh how the grades work if this is your first time listening to the dawn patrol podcast welcome by the way uh this is how it goes i grade each and every facet of the game whether it's offense defense special teams and coaching after i give my letter grades for those areas we round it off and give an overall grade for the team as a whole let's start off with the offense offense came out as i said opening drive was an a plus that opening drive unfortunately after that the offense did absolutely 
nothing. Like I said, they never touched the red zone. They didn't do anything of note. They scored those seven points on the first drive and didn't score another point. Offense gets a D minus. Horrible, horrible offensive showing today. In this, in spite of Alvin Kamara having one of his best seasons, I mean best games of the season, running the ball, they were horrible. Defense gets a B plus, and they only get a B plus because they did they got turnovers. You know, they got uh, pressure on Sam Donald. Sam Donald did absolutely nothing other than five throws, and only two of them really mattered. <laughs> it was, and that was it. And, it, it. and what's sad is when you think about Carolina, the last time we played Carolina in week three, I believe, um, Baker Mayfield started that game, and he only made about three decent throws that beat us. So collectively, in two games, only five throws were made by the Carolina Panthers by two different quarterbacks, and they swept us for the first time since 2015. Defense gets a B plus. Special teams, Will Lutz missed two field goals. Two. You can argue if he make one of them, we win the game. Now, like I said earlier, I don't blame this game on Will Lutz, but he missed two field goals. Kicking uh, the punting game didn't look too good as well. It, it was kind of shaky. So uh, special teams gets a D minus. And coaching gets a flat D. Um, Should have been lower, but I'm going to give them a D because they did. That off, the defense looked awesome today. Defense did their job. They came to play. They were coached up. Uh, the first op- the opening drive of the offense, they were – coached up aside from that it was horrible job coaching horrible job of adjusting they get a d overall as a team today the saints receive a d plus as a grade uh which is probably the grade for the entire nfl season this se- <laughs> for this season uh actually it's an f but whatever yeah this is disappointing saints lose today uh, by the score of 7-10, to 10, which is also their record for this season. I, I'm, I'm curious to know what everybody's feelings are now that the season is over. Do, it, is it – are you optimistic about next season? What do you think will happen next season? Do you think the Saints will make a change at the, at the coaching position? I, I don't see it happen. And that's the only thing I'm frustrated about, people. I'm be honest with you. Because I know they're not going to change. I know they're not going to fire Dennis Allen. It's not going to happen. And so it's, it, we, we, we can go ahead on and book it that we're going to sit through this again next year. Because it's not going to change. You are who you are. Dennis Allen is who he is. This is who he is. Did you see how this game was called? <laughs> he what's going to change that throughout this season he showed when you had opportunities to take control of the division take control of your playoff chances he was conservative he didn't want to uh, 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 make any waves didn't go for it on fourth down didn't uh, go down the field press, press uh, uh, the defense nothing like that you know even on defense He'll sit there, he'll go and prevent, you know. He didn't want to give up the big plays and all this other stuff. He is so vanilla. It is embarrassing to watch. It was hard to watch this game. It got into the third quarter. I knew the Saints were going to lose. I knew the Saints lost this game. And what's disturbing, I didn't care. I was sitting there. I'm like, Saints about to lose. And it was. It, I started chuckling because I knew it was. It, it didn't matter. Granted, the game didn't matter whether you won or lost anyway, but it was like, I didn't care. I honestly did not care. And it, it was like, man, this team has fallen, has fallen so far off the beaten path. It's ridiculous. But, like, 
like I had started off by saying, I would love to know your feelings. I'm, you can see what my feelings are. I want to know yours. Email the show, kbradiopodcast at gmail.com. Also, you can shout me out on Twitter at KB Radio Network and on other social media platforms too. Uh, just look up the KB Radio Network. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts, don't forget about the five stars and reviews. It helps the show out tremendously. Don't forget about sharing the show as well. You know, let everybody know in your little circle of friends and loved ones that you're listening to the Dome Patrol podcast here on the KB Radio Network, even though we only have one more show on the Dome Patrol podcast that we're doing this season, and that will be the season wrap-up. Everybody, thank you for joining me throughout this season. Uh, Even though I know it was tough. (laughs) <laughs> it was tough watching. Trust me, it was equally as tough trying to do this show every week. Um, <laughs> watching this team, trying to dissect this team, trying to analyze this team, even though it that wasn't really hard. It wasn't hard to analyze them because you knew who they were. But it was hard as a, a diehard who that to subject myself to it, <laughs> just like all of you who had to subject themselves to watching this debacle but like i said uh next week we will be having our season finale of the dome patrol podcast come back and join after we go over this train wreck of a season game by game and discuss what to look forward to in this upcoming season hopefully we'll be discussing finding a new coach (laughs) but i doubt i doubt it but uh Definitely have to find a quarterback and other pieces to this puzzle. Everybody, can't wait to speak to you then. Keep your heads up. It's a new year. Don't worry about it. It's over now. The season is over. We can start over and hopefully push ahead to bigger and brighter things in the Who That Nation. Until I speak to you again, I'm going to be screaming. You're still going to be screaming. We're all going to scream it together. Who that?